this year. Uh, I would like to thank Asocham first for this opportunity to share my thoughts on a very pertinent topic and everybody has agreed. And I am also sure everybody agrees that uh, privacy today is one of the most challenging topics for both industry, the government, academia. And that's why there is a large debate uh, happening and we are here today to discuss the same. Uh, we all know how devices have become omnipresent and the data that is being generated. And it is no longer us, only the tech savvy or the people in the cities. Uh, it is affecting everyone equally. Uh, maybe the statement is dated four or five years, but the intent, if you look at the intensity of the debate and the kind of data being generated, uh, it has increased many folds. And uh, there are, you know, essentially three type of people uh, when it comes to uh, data being generated, the privacy protection and the concerns, the societal expectations that you carry. So there are the informed ones who are okay when they say there is a trusted technology available. I am sure how my data is being used and I am okay with it. And then there is a middle level which says I am okay with some sort of compromises until unless I am getting some services. In fact, people are willing to pay and you know, take free services and share data. And that's where a little bit of grey area starts to come in. And then there are the third types who really don't know, you know, what is being done with their data, how it is being affected or protected. Uh, we at Microsoft firmly believe that any type of user is equally entitled to right to privacy and their data protection. And there, there has to be a, a mechanism in place at the same time which also protects the interests of trade and business, especially where there is a cross-border data flow involved. And at the same time, it should also factor in the local nuances of the governments who are operating between you know, these two bilateral kind of agreements. Uh, so with the, the, uh, the new wave of generative AI that everybody is talking about, of course, brings in a very challenging aspect. Maybe I will not delve too much uh, into that area, but of course, that adds, to the, adds, adds further to the challenges which is already uh, existing in data privacy and protection regime. And we uh, also you know, propagate and agree when it comes to the basic tenets of data. We as Microsoft say that you as a customer own your data, in fact you control your data and you should know where your data is and how it is being used. And that's where we also uh, support what Rahul said in terms of the regulations being in place. We are very pro-regulation company. And we understand that operating within the guardrails of regulations are better for the industry. And although uh, this debate about privacy sometimes is attributed to EU and US, but if you look at India and its history, it's been here for ages. You know, even in ancient India, there's a saying like "Sarve Swe Swe Grihe Raja," means everybody is a king in their own home, and even a king of the state cannot you know, supersede the privacy of the house that a person maintains. And this has continued uh, after the constitution was written and the, the focus that was given in the constitution intrinsically and then has been multiple interpretation by the courts about whether the right to privacy exists in the constitution. However, this was put to rest uh, by the 2017 decision of the Supreme Court which classified right to privacy as being fundamental right and deriving uh, uh, this fundamental feature from the right to personal liberty and freedom. Uh, there have been also uh, some thought from the government saying that your right to privacy is also subject to some restrictions and we also kind of agree that there has to be some legitimate interest of the state for that restriction has to be enabled by law at the same time when the restriction is considered. And there is similarly a great history when it comes to regional Asian countries or the global countries uh, where privacy laws have been created and if you just start looking at a particular region, you will see there are common flows uh, in all, almost all privacy laws which are coming up and uh, you know there, there could be uh, some reference point to for example the EU law or the OECD privacy framework that exists and a lot of common points like uh, the, the single omnibus uh, uh, you know, privacy law that needs to be put in place, a single regulator that needs to be put in place, uh, also the rights of the data subjects, for example, right of data access, right of data eraser, 
and also the data portability angles uh, are common across all the logs. Uh, also, the separation between the processors and the controllers, uh, areas where additional protection requirements like the children data when it, when it comes to processing children data. But at the same time, there are divergences also. As I said, there is a commonality when it comes to uh, processors and controllers being defined in these laws. There is a uh, you know diversion, divergence in the definition itself. And that brings me to my key point, that is about the coherence when it comes to all these kind of privacy protection laws across region and then gradually escalate it to the global levels. And we believe uh, as Microsoft that there are multiple areas uh, where there could be quick wins and regulators can you know, come together and work for that coherence. What it would do, it would create a very positive impact in terms of, uh, everybody talked about the consumer trust. So when this kind of coherence come in, comes into place, the consumer then starts trusting that my data is safe and being processed as per law. There would be a greater engagement between the regulators across regions, also reducing complexity for them at the same time. Then the organizations who operate across the borders, who exchange cross-border data, the cost of doing business goes down because of the you know, standardization of the approach that is being taken by the regulators in that zone. Uh, we also believe that there are uh, you know, areas like, uh, uh, you know, if you look at India, for example, as a country, there is a multitude of regulators and everybody is has started to come up with some sort of you know, uh, data protection or breach related requirements, which might not be consistent even today if you look at some of the recent regulations, they are not consistent with each other. So that is one area for example to begin with at, at the country level. If we start looking at the uh, regional level, maybe the forums like ASEAN, APPA or the APAC, there we can go sit together as regulators, you know, learn from each other in terms of what is working, what is not working and then uh, as I said early, uh, identify the quick pins where we can really agree together that this is where we can work and uh, there could be one standard approach across the region. Uh, finally, I would like to end uh, by saying that the kind of concerted effort that we are suggesting regionally uh, would support the progress to take this to a global level and ensure interoperability when it comes to these data related protection laws or standards and we also support any effort that is uh, required as Microsoft, both for the government and the regulator uh, uh, and the industry to work together and really make it a successful endeavor. So thank you everyone for that.